Listen to this. We're going back to Universal, baby. It's nice to once again see crabs pouring into the Universal parking garages. They've actually started parking cars in it every other spot to ensure social distancing once you exit your vehicle. When they first reopened City Walk, this was not a practice put into play, but now they're doing it. We are in. Out here at City Walk, they've continued to gut this building out. We took a look at it last time. And they just have put up the construction walls, but now they have totally gutted out the entire thing, including the upstairs part. The facades also be torn up here. And here they took the theming off these poles. It's one massive piece of land right here. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. The entrance line to the turnstiles was ratted through the ticket booths. After about a 45 minute process from the parking garage to the park, we are now in Universal Studios Florida. They added these two new banners to the Bourne facade. It actually looks pretty good. And this lady over here is wiping down a sign that has probably never been touched by a guest today because that attraction is yet to be open, but good job anyway. The character attendants over here have masks on, but Marilyn Monroe herself does not have a mask. As long as you stand six feet apart, you'll be okay. The horror makeup show is closed and they've built a temporary stage outside and they're doing a lot of the street shows on the stage. So the Marilyn Monroe show has moved from New York to the stage and throughout the day, they do various other little performances and stuff out here. So it'll be cool to see how this is used to get performers off of the road and onto an elevated stage. Over here next to Central Park, there was a food stand. They've removed it and it looks like they might be replacing it with something else because they still have the piping and whatnot out here, but the food stand that was here has been removed. They have park maps set up around the park like this so they don't have to hand out paper ones. So a cool little map that they have. You'll see this all around the park. After years of not functioning, the kid zone sign does now spin again. A little universal miracle here. SpongeBob is doing his meet and greet up on this kid zone stage. A little bit of dance and action going on. Unfortunately, Fievel's Playland is closed because of social distancing rules. Sad day for this little fellow over here, but he'll be back. Currently, this back area of Kid Zone is closed, but they said the Curious Storage play area is also closed, but the Woody Woodpecker Coaster will be open and the Barney Show will also be open. So all the play areas are temporarily closed. Hey, Doc! Kind of a bizarre shakeup here. They took the screen used DeLorean and they replaced it with one from Bob's Prop Shop. It's a replica. Although the DeLorean is no longer screen used, the train is still authentic and from Back to the Future Part 3. There's a really good chance that Bob's Prop Shop could actually be restoring the original screen used DeLorean and they've just temporarily swapped them out so they could fix up the real one and then bring it back when it's all ready to go looking good again. Over here at Fear Factor they have a rest area set up where you could remove your mask and take a break. Some of the shops in here have these little social distancing markers, but there's really nothing over the top in Diagon Alley to take away from the theming. Gringotts is virtual line only, and they have this big queue set up to get to the locker area without having to get within six feet of people. Fast and Furious might be open, but no one's out here. Fast and Furious is the only ride here where social distancing was already a thing before coronavirus even happened. I think that I'm the only guest inside of this entire facility right now. Still is the best area music though. That's it? That's, that's what we got? <laughs> well guys, my name is Pat. Welcome to the break room. And then go Mia. What's up Mia? As you see on these walls are our family. My face not up there. So when I'm in this room, I feel like we're all together again. Jamie, it's going to be about the same. You just go in and you pick a line and they go, he going to do it for you. Have a great time. What's up? How you doing? Good. Awesome. My name's Jamie. Welcome to my war room. Hey, Pat. What's up, Jamie? I'm great. How are you? I'm chilling. Chilling like a villain? Oh, you good. You got it. Yeah. Uh, 
He wants us to get everybody over to the party at Sullivan's. But I wasn't invited. Sounds like a plan. That party is a ready-made diversion. Thanks. My name is Special Agent Luke Hobbs of the U.S. Diplomatic Security Service. And as of 16.9 seconds ago, I'm the man in charge. Over here at the Beat Builder Show in the New York area of the park, they have countless social distancing markers to ensure the guests could stay six feet apart while watching the show. Are y'all here to see the Blues Brothers? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. We're glad to see you. The only thing is, is I got a problem with the Blues Brothers. They owe me money, honey. All I wanted from them was a little bit of respect. Come on, baby. Welcome back. I need y'all to put your hands together. We got you guys here. Come on now. Get into this. I said, what do you want? Baby, I can't If you weren't aware, the Blues Brothers are the best street show here at Universal. They have some awesome retro merchandise in here. Here you have Back to the Future 35th anniversary. And over here we have Universal Studios Florida 30th anniversary merchandise. Signs like these up that tell you where you can go wash your hands. They point you towards the nearest bathrooms. Pretty cool idea to keep people safe. Now I'm gonna jump over here onto the Hogwarts Express and hop over to Island of Adventure to see what's going on over there. Thank you. This line is six feet apart throughout the entire building. Pretty insane. Before you get on the train here, they have one guest over in the front and then someone else stands on the marker back here. So they keep this distance. Every single party that comes on the Hogwarts Express gets their own uh, cabin. So because I'm a party of one, I have this cabin all to myself and I'll get my own private ride, which is kind of cool. This queue coming out here is the line for the Hagrid attraction, but it's free flowing into Hogsmeade Village. Great to be back here at Island of Adventure. Just had a good time at Universal Studios Florida. Now we're gonna check out Iowa. Here at Poseidon Sphere, they really have to limit the amount of people they let in because it's a tight and closed, uh, closed quartered space attraction. So they have a very limited amount of guests that they allow in at once. This is extremely low capacity. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 spots to stand on inside of Poseidon's Fury. Probably cuts the capacity one-sixth of what it previously was. Oh, it's a door. Guys, there's another door. We're getting out of here. No, quite right, quite sorry. Quite okay. Quite okay. Seems like it started to rain on our return day to Island of Adventure, but no need to fear. Jacob here has an umbrella. Yup. So we're gonna see what we could do with this rain and I'll find any other park updates for you. We're gonna check out that Jurassic Park coaster and then we'll probably head out of here. Here's a look at the Jurassic Park coaster helix that it does down by the lagoon near Harry Potter. And boy, that is one sight to take in. That thing is a monster of a ride. That is crazy. Really excited to see how this ride turns out. Coming into Jurassic Park here, you can see the new lockers that they're building for Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Hopefully these will have some sort of Jurassic Park theming on the back, so it'll really make a great entrance to Jurassic Park. I'd expect some sort of Jurassic Park theming or rock work to go up here. Over here, you can see how this track has this extra spine piece that goes behind it. That really reinforces that, makes it more structurally sound. And the track is just huge. It's really incredible to see how this is going to transform the Jurassic Park section of the park into something more than it currently is right now. Really a massive coaster that they're building over here. Over here we can see some, uh, what it might be the station building going up. And they have this new planter here in the walkway. Coming up here on the right hand side is the all new Raptor Encounter attraction. Looks really good. Hi. Thank you. More than likely going to 
Jurassic World is now proud to present V. Mongoliensis, known to the world as Velociraptor. Over here from the Raptor Encounter Q, you got a great view of some more coaster track here and some feature rock work that they are installing. Over here in Toon Lagoon at Ripsaw Falls, this fountain in the back of the ride is functioning again. It's been broken for God knows how long, a very long time, months at, at least, but it's back and working 100%. Back here behind Toon Lagoon, there's a fantastic view of the Jurassic Park project. Over here on the left is the top hat of the ride. Over here is the helix that goes down by Harry Potter. And then over here on the left, behind the top hat, is going to be the show building and load station. And then of course you can see here how the coaster frames of the Discovery Center. It won't block the Discovery Center. The coaster track itself is just so good looking. Seeing this big monstrous pile of track back here, it just looks great. I'm excited to see how this here continues to flow across the water. When it's all said and done, it'll look fantastic. But right now, it's just a big piece of eye candy out here at the Island of Adventure Lagoon. Over here in the center is rumored to be some sort of water feature or a planter of sorts. And you can see the coaster supports actually dip down into it, then back up. Excited to see how this whole project turns out. The Marvel characters are over here greeting on a stage so you don't have to get too close to them. They stay up there on their platform and you take your pictures from a distance. Got the Green Goblin out here on top of the car. Doctor Doom. That's awesome. It's going to wrap up my day here at Universal Orlando. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was great to get out of the house. They have some fantastic precautions put into place. Overall, I think it was work to improve their system. And it's excited to be able to get back to the parks this summer. So anyway, guys, we'll catch you here next time at the Theme Park Shark. <laughs>